show me your papers. This is a common comparison that we hear today where people say we are very free because when we travel we don't have people waiting asking us to show us our papers. And back then in this time period of this photograph, this iconic photo, when you traveled you had to show your papers. And today we supposedly live in a much more free world but is that true? Is it really a more free time? Well, I'm going to share some information today, and I'll let you be the judge of it. When we see this photo, we say, well, that's pretty bad when you have to show your papers to travel. But is it really much better? We now have live facial recognition trucks being deployed outside to monitor individuals. All individuals, innocent individuals, facial recognition vans, which do live facial recognition analysis, heavily flawed by the way. This facial recognition is shown to be wrong about 85% of the time. So what it becomes is another method to get around the regulations and the probable cause that basically the justice system is founded on to require that probable cause. But when you deploy technology like this that is so heavily flawed, well, 85% failure rate? That's pretty bad. I don't think anything that has that much of a failure rate should be legally deployed, especially when it offers officers the ability to use it as a probable cause. Now, of course, I'm against criminal activity. I state that very clearly on this channel. You know, these videos are meant as educational videos where we talk about things happening in the world with technology and we relate it to history and try to determine where we're headed. And so when we see that it is a failing technology that's being deployed and now is in mobile facial recognition vans traveling in order to monitor and they say it's to keep you safe. But does it really keep you safe or does it just make you less free? When you're being monitored 24 hours a day, everywhere you go, everything you do, your facial recognition is identifying you if not wearing a facial covering. And in that way, you're able to be tracked from point A to B to C to D to E to F. You're basically being able to be tracked everywhere. And then we take into consideration that self-driving cars are also mobile mass surveillance systems where they're placing these cameras and of course they require them in order to notice things that are in the way and to be able to continue handling the self-driving. So we're turning our roads into mass surveillance mobile stations which can also incorporate facial recognition. I'm not sure if they are. I haven't actually looked into that part. But it's in stark contrast to what we once thought of as authoritarianism. When Show Me Your Papers was considered something that was a serious threat to your liberty. Well, when we take into consideration where we're at today, where you're not just showing your papers, you're stripping your clothes off. You're letting them do full strip searching in the airport. How have we gone and come so far from show me your papers to we're now much more free, but we have to strip search at the airport? How much sense does that make? And sometimes what mass media, you know, talks about, about your safety, about the dangers of terrorism, the dangers of drugs, which I'm against. Drugs never will improve your life. It'll only ruin your life. But I do want to make a point that the war on drugs is one of the things that started this entire trend. The war on drugs, the same war launched in 1971, has actually raised our prison population in the U.S. 800% in just 40 years. In a country that makes only 5% of the world, but carries an entire 25% of the world's prison population. 
something feels wrong about it. And I know that, you know, if you even read the 13th Amendment, it abolishes slavery except in the case that there is a conviction. So it's interesting that the U.S. says it abolished slavery, but if you look at it, there is a clause if someone has been convicted of a crime. And when you stretch the laws to include more things as crime, you can basically turn nearly anyone into a criminal. If you talk to law experts, I've heard some of them cite that the average person commits an average of seven felonies a day. As far as I know, I do nothing at all outside the law. But with laws expanding and complicating things, you never really know. I personally don't use drugs, and I am highly against drugs. I've seen what it's done to friends, and uh, I don't think the war on drugs is the solution, though. I think it is an excuse for mass surveillance. When we look at things like Posse Comitatus Act and what that law did, that act in the 1700s was signed in the U.S. to prevent federal military personnel from enacting domestic policies. But when your police starts to morph into something that is more powerful than many countries' militaries, how far off are we from violating the Posse Comitatus Act? Something to consider there, where policing has really changed since the war on drugs. And of course, now with the war on terror, which many have reported has not even stopped a single terrorist attack using mass surveillance. So how helpful is this, and how does it help change behavior? And I think that's really the big threat here is that things that we may take for granted, like our free expression, our right to protest, all of these things that are our liberties, these things that are our rights, are threatened by mass surveillance. Because when you put someone under observation 24 hours a day, you track their face, you track their every movement, well, what you're doing then is you're letting them know that they are being monitored. And what happens when someone knows they're being monitored? They change their behavior. They change and suppress their voice. So this causes self-censorship. It makes people afraid to protest. This is the kind of measure that you might see in an authoritarian state where mass surveillance is deployed in order to change human behavior. As the book Surveillance Capitalism states, they are trying to automate us. And really, that's what the end result of all of this is, is it is automating human behavior. But it's happening very slowly. We're starting out with these mobile facial recognition vans. We're moving into things like the self-driving cars. And all of that, they admit, is going to be data that can be used. And if you read the article, it even states that they see this as a perfect natural extension of automotive surveillance where years we've had growing number of features that are turning our cars into policing tools. And the way that policing has gotten so political, it's a dangerous trend to embark on where, you know, you really got to think of these things and how they're going. If you have any kids, what kind of future are they going to live in? Are we actually going to look back at days like this and say those people had freedom? And today, do we have freedom? Well, it's really subjective, depending on your outlook. Personally, I believe we should be wary of mass surveillance, heavily, heavily, because there are financial interests at play, not only in the self-driving car industry, where we have already seen how other types of corporations in other fields have partnerships where they share our personal data. And you think this will be any different? I would bet it will happen. I cannot imagine a world where all of this mass surveillance is happening and the data is not being shared. They do mention it in the article, but these are all things we should be taking into consideration 
and they also have body scanners now at airports. They're also placing them in other places. There's a company called Liberty Defense that employs these. And what these do is they use millimeter wave scanning. So it goes through your clothing, but it has a naked outline of your actual body and your private areas. This is the world we're in today. This is the world we left, regardless of the politics of this historical picture. I'm talking in the context of monitoring and surveillance. This was a form of early surveillance, but has it gotten better? Did we free the world in World War II? Or have we gotten worse? Are we going somewhere that could get just as dark? It's something I want everyone to consider as we talk about mass surveillance and the flaws in it. How these tools that are so flawed can then be used to just simply bypass traditional probable cause. That they can be used and programmed to reveal any result you want. You could feed it bad data and make it have everyone guilty. And in that way, you have no rights with this technology. Just something to think about. I wanted to share some thoughts today. Make sure to like the video. Let me know what you think. Do you think we're heading in a better direction for human rights, privacy, you know, liberty in general? Or do you think we're heading somewhere else? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll be back soon with some tutorials for you guys. Make sure to like the video, share it, subscribe, and follow over at the blog at bmc.link slash politictech and also at righttoprivacy.itp. That's it for today's short video, and I will be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy. Oh, it's supposed to feel